you know what? I didn't actually watch Gary Russell Jr. versus Patrick Hyland, but I was recommended to watch it by a few people. A lot of people were telling me uh, Russell Jr. was incredibly impressive. So uh, I went back and watched it today. It's only two rounds, four or five minutes long. So if you haven't seen it already, um, do check it out. Um, the full fight seems to be available via the Daily Motion website. I couldn't find it on YouTube, uh, but it was on Daily Motion. Um, and I've got to say, mightily, mightily impressed by uh, Gary Russell Jr. Patrick Highland, he looks unspectacular, but he was a guy who came to the ring 31 wins and only a single loss. He'd never been stopped before, and he was very, very big at the weight. You know, you could see he was a much bigger man than Russell Jr. And I've got to say, Russell Jr. absolutely destroyed Highland. Uh, the first round, simple. It's a battle of the jabs, and it's a battle of the jabs that... Um, Russell Jr. wins with consummate ease. I mean, you know, the fact that Patrick Highland is an experienced guy, the fact he is substantially bigger than Russell Jr., you'd think he'd have a chance. But the hand speed um, by Russell Jr. Uh, and the hand speed behind his jab is uh, world-leading. You know, it's one of the elite um, ex uh, the elite examples of hand speed you will see in world boxing. And his jab looks world-class. Uh, frankly, I was finding it hard to determine how accurate his jab was because of the speed behind it. But you could hear it landing. It was landing with such a snap. Um, and he was really destroying Highland and breaking him down in round one with the jab. You know, I thought that not only was Russell Jr. very, very quick with his hands, he was also quite quick with his feet. And he wasn't doing, you know, massive, wide lateral movement in this round. But what he was doing was just coming forward, coming back, just six inches in, six inches out. Um, you know, his judgment of range was superb. Um, and the fact he was a southpaw, the fact he was judging the range so well, meant that he was coming in, jabbing Highland and being out of range when Highland threw his jab, despite the fact that Highland was the substantially bigger man. So I thought that was really impressive. And Russell Jr. looked very, very sound in that round. In round two... Maybe he realised he was levels above, and this really is an exhibition of different levels in boxing. Uh, Russell Jr. starts to put punches together. You know, he starts to forget about a pure jabbing contest, and he starts to go into destroy mode. And the power he sows is is really, really decent, actually. The first knockdown he scores, uh, I think he goes to the body, uh, lands hard to the body, which brings the hand straight down, and he catches Highland with a decent hook straight across the chin knocks Highland down Highland gets up but to be honest he never recovers uh, Russell Jr. knocks him down twice in quick succession and um, you know is able to claim the stoppage and he, he finishes very very well you know the way he switches levels the way he was able to carve through Highland's defense to me was really impressive um, Russell Jr. you know you'd expect him to beat Highland I don't think that many people would have been picking Patrick Highland to win this fight um, but Russell Jr. had been inactive. Uh, I think he'd been out of the ring for 13 months prior to this fight. And his last two performances have been really, really impressive. Maybe he's a guy who hasn't historically been known as one of the, the biggest power punches in the world. But he's taken out Johnny Gonzalez and now he's taken out Patrick Highland in you know four or five minutes, something of that nature. So I think we need to give him respect there. Um, you know, he cements himself towards the top of the featherweight division and this performance lets us know he's in very, very good order. I mean, despite the inactivity, which is obviously a negative, this performance shows that he's right on par with where he needs to be and he is someone to definitely take note of in what is an extremely live division at present. You know, a lot of people were talking about Lee Selby versus Russell Jr. I think Selby would pose a much, much, much tougher test than Patrick Highland. I think Selby's judgment of range is superior to what Highland was able to do. I also think Selby would present a more difficult target to hit with his movement and with the threat that he poses himself with his accuracy and his, his punch election. Um, having said that, the way Selby struggled more recently against slightly slicker boxers like Montiel, um, like Eric Hunter... You'd have to say that some of the elite skills that uh, Gary Russell Jr. is showing in there could cause real, real major, major, major problems indeed for uh, Lee Selby. Obviously, Russell Jr. came up short the one time he fought Lomachenko, um, and it'd be interesting to see uh, whether that, you know, whether that fight is something that they would uh, look at again in terms of rematch. People are also looking at Leo Santa Cruz, and 
you know, it's a very, very live division, that. But credit to Gary Russell Jr. I certainly, um, you know, you can't get too excited by this performance, obviously, with it only being two rounds. You don't learn too much other than that he's in good order. But I'll certainly be looking forward to seeing him fight next time out. And, uh, yeah, with any luck, he'll be in against uh, someone of note. Let me know your thoughts on this fight. How impressed were you? How did you rate Gary Russell Jr. in the contest, context of the featherweight division? Many thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, do hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button so you can tune in to my other stuff. Many thanks for watching.